National uh, Secretary General of Ohaneze Ndigo. Uh, good morning to you, Mazi. Yes, good morning, Uncle. Thank you very and, much. Uh, good morning, viewers. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Um, well, especially against the backdrop of the subject, the quest for unity and national healing. It, 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 is, a bit, um, it is a bit bad, let it be said, uh, is it not? And that's why um, you know, we have this conversation today. It is a bit bad. Um, yes, it is a little bit, um, a little bit bad that um, at this point in time in our in our nationhood, a lot of things has gone bad, and uh, we believe that um, there should be a process for national healing and reconciliation. Um, because um, talking from the background of um, from the southeast we will notice that there has been a lot of um, cries of marginalization. Not only cries of marginalization, there has also been the activities of non-state actors trying to bridge the peace and security of the people of the Southeast. Indeed. And there have been also, there have been also a lot of agitations going in the Southeast regarding that the Southeast has been excluded from the scheme of things in the Nigerian project. But uh, there is a ray of hope in the current administration of the president, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, who has um, been advised and some certain times um, saying that uh, there must be a process of national reconciliation. And uh, this is what the Southeast people and the Ndebo in general has been expecting that there must be some issues that must be addressed. Looking um, critically to the facilities in the Southeast, let us start from the facilities in the Southeast. Yes. Because I was going to, uh, sorry, before you yeah. continue, before you continue, Mazi, I, I was going to say that, um, again, when you said some people feel a certain marginalization, I don't know, it depends. Everybody is probably keeping their own scores. I mean, the uh, the way other people would see it is that they're being as fair as can be. Uh, it's not as if the uh, uh, citizens from the southeast are not including in the, included in the president's cabinet, uh, the minister of works, and you know that kind of a thing. Uh, so when people say that, I, I don't know. Do you accept that position? It's not as if it's a given that yes, indeed, uh, southern eastern, easterners, uh, specifically Igbo are in, excluded. Is, is that the premise, that Igbos are being excluded? Yes, there is this um, feelings all over the, uh, the Southeast that um, right from the last um, administration, that um, Igbos, we are relegated to the background. And um, we have seen a little improvement in the current administration of the president, mm. that there is renewed hope that Igbos we are regarded as 5% in the last uh, administration of uh, the federal government led by president, former President Muhammad Buhari, when Igbos we are totally on over 95% excluded from the scheme of things. But as and, you know, um, that, as, as, sorry, Mazi, as you know, I think whether it is right or wrong, the calculation at that time was that, look, they were sort of being uh, proportionally uh, representative vis-a-vis uh, -vis what was the contribution from that area. And um, as I said, whether right or wrong, uh, that was that then in the last administration. Uh, now, I, I don't know, do you fault the idea that, you know, things are taken from the point of view of those who contributed the most going by empirical figures, uh, naturally should be considered ahead of um, others that didn't consider, uh, that didn't contribute as, as much. I don't know what you think of that whole notion. Yes, I, I think that um, the, the, the notion of uh, the, the winner takes it all and that um, those who contributed uh, at a, a certain numerical strength uh, above some certain regions should be considered first um, should it be the basis of um, 
um, the national, uh, the process of national healing and reconciliation, uh, at, at every point in time, there must, even in, in the other developed countries of the world, we will say that uh, there must be some level of uh, um, acceptance of any political parties in some certain areas or in certain regions. But that does not mean that when the election is over and governance is in process, everybody must, uh, must um, from the, all the geopolitical zones, must be uh, contribute to ensure that there is equity, there is a reflection of federal character, and there is also uh, respect that uh, the best hands must be uh, considered from the zones to ensure that um, every zones are being accommodated in the scheme of things in the prisons. But uncle, that is not the issue here. Okay. The issue, yeah, the issue here is that at this point in time in the life of our nationhood, we must critically look on issues that will bring peace, stability, and progress of Nigeria. And at this point in time, we must commend the president and uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria and the, um, uh, uh, the Grand Commander of Chief, uh, Armed Forces that the, uh, the President, uh, yeah, Commander in Chief, the President, Bola Metinubu, uh, contrary to expectations, has surprised a lot of Nigerians. And this is where uh, it becomes very pertinent that Ndibu and the people of the Southeast uh, must ensure that what is most important at this point in time is not about appointments. What is important about us at this point in time is the level of infrastructure development in our zone. Uncle, I must tell you the fact that the first time since 1999, Ndibu are uh, having a hope that there's going to be an infrastructure development in the Southeast. Regarding the issue of what we have seen on the ground that President Bolame Tinubu appointed for the first time a civil engineer in the capacity of the Minister of Wars, Senator Engineer Dave Umahe, yes. who has, we have seen, has rekindled a, 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 a bite and a light of hope for the people of Nigeria. Because at this point in time, let me be honest with you, Nigerians, especially the people of the Southeast, are suffering a lot regarding the federal highways in the Southeast. We have seen a lot of roads built within six months we collapse because of the contractors. We have found out that the contractors from the Southeast are not doing a good job. Most of them are doing a lot of shadow job. So we are very, very, we are very, very uh, happy. The people of the Southeast have seen a kind of a renewed hope that the, the Minister for Works and uh, uh, Engineer Dave Fumahe, who has been touring around some areas in the southeast to ensure that the contractors who are handling the road projects uh, maintain a level standard of road construction across the country, not only in the southeast. Indeed. So he, we he, welcome he, he's, yeah. very, he's very much said to put all of what you've just said right. As you said, a highly experienced uh, engineer, very well uh, acknowledged nationally uh, for that prowess. And, and then before then, uh, certainly, the, the, uh, the national landmark of the Niger Bridge, the second Niger Bridge, you know, it, it was, you know, a lot, a lot went into that. And uh, everybody is saying that, look, there's no way you look at, there's nothing else you can say but that this has been a momentous uh, contribution. Yes, that is, a, that is one of the, the, the landmarks of a, a former president, uh, um, um, Muhammad Buhari. Yes. We commend him for that, even though that the project was under PPP. But we appreciate, Ndibo really appreciates the APC led federal government of uh, led under President Muhammad Buhari for leaving that milestone achievement from, uh, for, the, for, the, for posterity. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen that the PDP governments in their 16 years of uh, in, in power or more than uh, uh, 20 years of, they couldn't do much for the people of the Southeast. They gave a lot of appointments for the people of the Southeast, but it does not translate to uh, infrastructure revolution and the facilities on the ground. Okay. So what we are, what we are looking up to this hour, you know, the, after the removal of the fuel subsidy, there's a lot of hardship in the country. There's a lot of hardship and the people of the, uh, the people of the Southeast are experiencing. So what we are trying to say is that at this point in time, the people of the Southeast have the least um, uh, number of ministers 
uh, across the zones. But that is not our problem. That is not uh, uh, the situation. The expectations of the people is that the people are happy that the president, uh, Bolame Tinubu, appointed a civil engineer for the first time since 1999 to supervise the Ministry of Works. And it, and it happens and to be works, from the Southeast. Yes, that it happened to be from the Southeast. <laughs> and we shot, we want to use this opportunity, but wants to use this opportunity and to thank uh, Mr. President for the quality of ministers that are appointed across the Southeast, especially giving us the Ministry of Works to be supervised by a highly experienced, skilled um, civil right. engineer okay. who has shown capacity and also Let me... who has shown that the, the the kind of work because I want to make I want to make a serious point here. Oh, 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 okay, because I I, I, I wonder if I, I, because I don't want to interrupt you, maybe I can go on a break and then quickly come back and then we'll pick it up from there. Uh, please stay with us. Dark marks have tried everything. Nivea Lumina 630 works from day one with visible results in just two weeks and 71% dark marks reduction in 12. Join the 1 million women already using Lumina 630 from Nivea. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Every major news story is with many perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TVC News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live for the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. The TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. Okay, welcome back. And our guest still is uh, Mazi Okechuku Isu Guzoro. And um, we, were, well, we had to go away to a break, but he wanted to make a very important point. We're talking generally about um, the quest for unity and uh, national healing. This is against the backdrop of uh, maybe bruised feelings that um, he was speaking about the perceived marginaliz marginalization. Uh, but then we also spoke about proportional representation. And um, he said, yeah, what without prejudice to that. Please continue, if you will. Uh, Mazi, uh, okay, Chuku. Yes, um, that is, um, thank you, Uncle, and uh, thank you for uh, giving me the, this uh, uh, real opportunity. So, what I'm trying to say in essence is that, um, um the, 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 the need for the federal government to have a level of federal presence in the southeast and the rehabilitation, especially in infrastructure development of the southeast. And I want to put it on the record that the expectations of the people of the Southeast at this point in time is that we must have a quality road network. Okay. Fedra most, of, most of our federal highways are dead traps. Like, you know, uh, the, the, the federal government did a little job and a good job between Enugu Patakot Expressway, but there are some portions that are very, very bad from Aba. To put our courts, you know, it's a death trap. Okay, and it now cannot be, you the know, minister, the, the federal minister of works will, of course, know that as well as if I, better than uh, most people. So I'm sure um, that whole project is in good hands. Now, uh, whereas all of these that you're talking about are important, but I wanted to also spare some time for um, the quest for uh, unity, uh, you know, and healing, uh, because there seems to be a situation where Candidates of the election, you know, the result has been made known. The situation, the level of relationship between them is still such that um, it doesn't really allow, uh, it does not appear to me for a sort of rapprochement 
and uh, reconciliation. What can you say about that? Because we do need to reconcile. We do need to get along uh, for the progress of not just the Southeast, the entire country. What, what are your ideas about what we could do in that regard? Well, what I, I think we should do in this regard is very clear. Uh, we are calling on uh, uh, there must be a sort of um, dialogue within all the stakeholders and not uh, state actors from the southeast. And uh, because um, most of these boys who are agitating for um, another state, um, God Biafra, needs to be talked to. We have the level of security, insecurity in the southeast at this point in time. Kudos to the southeast governors who have done a good job to restore normalcy and to end the disastrous city at home that have been crippling the economy of the people of the southeast. Okay. But more is expected to be done on the side of the federal government. What the expectation uh, we keep on hammering is that at this point in time, the federal government must engage the, uh, uh, the non-state actors through Ohanes and Debo and through the Southeast governors, and also some Igbo prominent people in APC, which the, the ring leader is uh, uh, His Excellency Engineer Dave Umahe, who happens to be a strong cabinet and a believer of Aswaji presidents. Oh, okay. You know, so you, you point, know I beg your pardon, oh, we've, we've just about, we've almost run out of time, but I just wanted to get this statement from you about where you feel there is hope for progress. And uh, this is, you, you've said this, you, if I paraphrase you correctly, you think there should be much more engagement, perhaps, not from leaders of Hanez Indigo and indeed of the Southwest, I mean Southeast, with the federal authorities towards what you've just been saying. Did I sort of, is, is that really it? A yes, more vigorous also, engagement. And also, if possible, to grant President Shepardon to all those who are freedom fighters in all the uh, detention across the country, including the leader of IPOB, Martin Nabdekano. Okay, then. This will bring designed hope. But before I leave, I want to make a point, and I want to... Very, very, very system. briefly, please. Just very, very, very briefly. briefly. Based on the infrastructure development in the Southeast, Ohanes Ndebo is begging President Spala Tinubu to look into and release funds for the Minister of Wars to ensure that the roads in the Southeast will be done with, uh, will, be, will, will go a long way to sustain his legacy, his projects, and also to ensure that the people of the Southeast enjoy a good road network through cement technology. All and right, we then. That and we're going to have to leave it there. Mazi, we're done. Thank you very much, Uncle. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Mazi Okechuku Isuguzoro, uh, former national youth leader and currently Ohanese. Uh, Secretary uh, General. Okay, now um, stay with us please. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back and um, we'll move over on our topic uh, schedule. Uh, looking at um, quarter politics, matters are rising. Lagos is the most visited state in Africa as the fifth largest economy on the continent. Covering the state and its government is no me feat, it's a busy beat. We go beyond the curtain of tapes to travel in far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. A greater Lagos shall be ours. We tell you stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. Amadido Jasalamadini, I live in Lagos, inside Lagos. Coming up in the month of September. On the 5th is International Day of Charity, while the 7th of September is International Day of Police Corporation. The 8th is International Literacy Day. Also on the 8th is one year remembrance of Queen Elizabeth II's death. 10th September is World Suicide Prevention Day. On the same day is one year anniversary of when Prince Charles was proclaimed king. On the 11th of September, it's 22 years after the World Trade Center was attacked by terrorists in the United States in 2001. 
15th September is International Day of Democracy, while the 16th is International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. 21st September, International Day of Peace, and 23rd is dedicated as International Day of Sign Languages. 27th September is set aside as World Tourism Day, and 28th is World Maritime Day. On the 29th is International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. Stay tuned to TVC News as we bring you reports and analysis of these events. TVC News, first with breaking news. Okay, welcome back. And um, as I said, moving over now to um, Kogi State. And our uh, guest this time is the Commissioner for uh, Information and Communication, uh, Mr. Uh, Kingsley Fanwu. A fine morning to you, Mr. Fanwu. Thank you for making time for us. Thank you very much for having me. And um, I want to also commend you for all you are doing. Good morning to viewers of this program around the world. You're very kind, sir. Thank you very much. I can see you're wearing a cap, and um, well, that sort of leads us straight into it. The cap you are wearing, um, <laughs> the cap you are wearing has a particular name on it, and that is the candidate of the um, uh, APC in the upcoming election uh, in November, uh, right? And this must be very important. That's why you put that cap on. Naturally, that's going to be the person you're supporting. Tell me about the candidate of the APC in the upcoming election. Uh, thank you very much. We are already in the inauguration mood as uh, the inauguration of the uh, State Campaign Council for the APC will be done in the next two hours here at the government house in Lokoja. So we are, we are ready for the campaign. The, the candidate is someone who understands uh, the terrain, who understands the system, who has been a part of the system for the past seven years and definitely knew how to consolidate and continue the good policies and legacies of the present administration under the leadership of His Excellency Al Haji Yahya Bello. Uh, he's bringing on board, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of experience, a lot of expertise, and a lot of um, uh, commitment to moving the state forward. And uh, his policy is not going to be a, a, a marked difference from what we have experienced under the present um, administration. He's just going to consolidate on it because. Uh, we have identified the areas where where you develop these areas, the state will be developed. Areas such as education, healthcare, security, industrialization, women and youth inclusion, and civil service reforms. So he's still going to anchor the administration on some of these things that have really advanced the cost of the state in the past seven and a half years. Mm. Uh, well, um, while we're at it, we might as well look at, um, since you said it's going to, there's, there's going to be a continuation, there's a, it's, a, it's going to be uh, uh, there will be continuity. That is very, very much in focus. So should the, lecture, uh, should the electorate indeed <clears throat> go the way of your wishes and um, bring in you know, the next governor uh, uh, from your party, there will be a continuity. Now, perhaps that gives us the reason to look at um, sort of a, something of a scorecard of what's going on. Uh, let me take very, very importantly the whole matter of um, salary payments. Salary payments in your state. Um, has that been on time and has that been to the satisfaction of the workers? How do you see uh, it? Thank you, very much. Uh, thank you very much. It has been one of the um, recurring issues uh, that have been promoted you know, to a very um, large extent by the opposition of the present administration. Uh, it started from when we had what we call the staff verification exercise and uh, during that time we decided to lock the tap while we mend the broken pipes. Uh, it is not wise for you to switch on your tap uh, while you are mending the broken pipes in your, in, your, in your bathroom. So we were able to lock it for a few months. Uh, and as soon as we were done with the verification exercise that saved the state billions of Naira, we switched it on again. And we ensured that all the areas were paid. Uh, at the state level, we are not going a dime to any of the civil servants. I can challenge uh, the media houses to come to Kogi State and meet with civil servants to ask them questions. Then yes. at the local government level, which has been, uh, which has been uh, what we have been talking about for a very long uh, period of time, uh, it, is, uh, it is unfortunate that we are where we are uh, today. And you know, I watched uh, 
uh, on this channel how the spokesman of the SDP, a uh, governorship candidate, came on here to talk about local government salaries and percentage payment. He was chairman of Olama Borough for three years, and throughout the three years, he could not pay 100%. So it, 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 um, it's a mark of hypocrisy and um, you know, unnecessary criticism uh, for anybody to now uh, try to condemn what the state government is doing. I'm going to come up with some statistics here. Uh, there, is a, there is a neighboring state to us here, uh, which starts with O. I won't mention their name because of the need uh, for data privacy, uh, but I can give it to you behind the scene for you to verify. Uh, that state has a population of 5.3 million people. The primary schools they have is uh, they have 3,125 primary schools, and they have 6,984 staff in those uh, primary schools. In Kogi State, where we are 4.4 million people, we have 2,759 primary schools, and our uh, primary school staff, <laughs> you, you won't believe it, we are talking about over 15,000 here, you know? And the people that have 3,125 uh, schools have only 6,984 staff. So you can, you can now put it together and see that the, the problem that we are facing was the issue of uh, so, many, so many people being employed into the payroll of the government without um, adequate uh, preparation to be able to pay them. And they are even not having specific roles to play. In some local government areas in, in our state here, you have about three, four functional vehicles. Uh, because of the um, issue of monetization. So the uh, government offices don't keep many official vehicles anymore. But you have three, four functional vehicles, and you'll be talking about uh, over 23 drivers. So these were the things done by the previous administration, and that was the reason the issue of percentage payment started with the previous administration. What the percentage that are even being paid now is quite higher than what were being paid during the previous uh, administration. And I will give it to you that what we are paying in Kogi State is far higher than what other states are paying. For instance, when you come to the state salary uh, scale, there is a, one of the KKK states in the north. I will not mention the name of the state, but I will give you this data so that you will look at it. The difference between, okay, level 15, grade level 15 in Kogi State uh, takes about 141,160 naira. And the same level in that one of the KKK states take um, 82,000, 82,705. You can see the difference that is close to 60,000 difference. So what we are paying is quite high. And it shows that Kogi State is one of the highest paying states in the Federation uh, today. Indeed. Um, well, as you said, the opposition, uh, the way they have put it out, and you sort of address that, that that's coming uh, from uh, the opposition and that uh, a detached look at the figures would also would, would show a different kind of a picture. Okay, the other thing that is also an issue that um, I would like you to speak on um, is this whole matter about uh, local government uh, tenures. You know, that also, I think, is another thing that the opposition is talking about, uh, and where they say that, look, give us a chance and we'll do a lot better. Uh, well, that's partly the job of opposition, to not see very much that is good in, in you know, but in, 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 you know, in those that they want to take over from. But they have said that a much better job could have been done. Speak to that, if you will, please. Uh, thank you very much. The issue is that when you are in the opposition, you are expected to have a lot of understanding of the workings of government. That is very much important. I, I think the opposition should go into a lot of research, have a lot of information. Uh, instead of um, all these spurious uh, fallacy that are being put out there by um, the opposition parties. I, I watched on the TV station, not TVC, uh, where the candidate of the AGC uh, was talking about the fact that a level 15 uh, officer in the state is taking um, about, about 15,000 or, or, or thereabout. I don't even know how much he called it. Because he has not done a research and therefore he has um, uh, gone out there to, to, to disgrace truth, facts, and logic. And, and that is quite unfortunate. And, you know, anytime he goes out to talk, 
you know, people understand that this is not the kind of person they can entrust the state uh, in his hands. So when you talk about the tenor of local government administration, we had our, uh, the last local government ad- uh, election by this administration when many other states were not uh, even conducting local government elections. The governor conducted uh, the local government election and he did not uh, tamper with the tenor of the local government uh, administration. Why others are talking about autonomy? Autonomy has come to stay in Nigeria since the beginning of this administration. So we do not have any problem with that. And the tenor of the present administration is going to end uh, by December uh, this year. At that time, they will leave and then preparations for uh, another election will start in earnest, uh, most especially of, uh, you know, by the next administration. So by and large, they need a lot of information. You know, if you go out at, uh, you know, the tenor of the local government administration, it means that they did not even take note of happiness in their state to know that the tenor of the present administration has not, has not expired. So <laughs> it, it is unfortunate. So I want the media to put them on the spot. Let them come out with data. I just told you what a level 15 officer in the state's uh, civil service in Kogi State ends. And what the same, you know, the, the civil servants on the same level in another state in the north, one of the KKK states, the difference about 60,000 error. Nobody is talking about this. And nobody is commending the administration of, of Alaji Ayabelu about it. When we even came into office, let me shock you, we, we met about three months salary arrears. They are not talking about that. We have been able to clear that. And today, nobody is talking about being old. And the civil servants are comfortable. You know, when you are winning elections, it should tell the people something. The people are happy with it, with this administration. The civil servants, the people on the street, the market women, they are very happy with this administration. And All when right. you look at where uh, the administration one, has... One second, please. I beg your pardon. Okay. Um, there's a Mr. Jubril who has called in from Abuja who would like to join the conversation. Good morning to you, Mr. Jubril. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yes. I want to react to some of the things you're basically saying on, on, on that program. Okay. Go, go ahead. I am from Kogi State. I am from Kogi State. From Borno State? I'm a retired director, director of a federal government agency. You are from Kogi State? I, yes. Okay. And I'm, a, and I'm a retired director of a federal government agency. All right. And I want to say here with all terms of responsibility, and with due respect, that that commissioner is telling you a lie. Uh-uh. You see, uh, we, 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 could you be specific? Are, what, what, all, what, what fact would you contest? All, the fact of salaries. Okay. Okay. Salaries in Cookie. Let him show you a piece of, of, of a serving staff. Hello, please continue. Let him let show you a pay slip of a serving staff. Oh, oh, oh. You, that, 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 you are that saying that the uh, Honorable Commissioner cannot prove that anybody has actually received uh, salaries along the line that he has described. That is, that is saying. Mm. On paper, you have, you have those salaries stated, like, as you said, but they are not receiving that amount. Okay. I, is that the main thing, or did you, know, did you want to also that, comment on anything that, else? It's that just is that. Number, number one. Number two, go to local lo- 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 that he's talking about. If, if the road from Canada to from the town to Canada is in Grand Pass. Okay. Well, o- o- all right. I want to thank you very much, Mr. Jubril, uh, for coming in uh, at that time uh, because this gives us a chance to. Well, this is what a viewer, you heard him yourself. This is what a viewer has yes, said. Yes, thank you. We are quite familiar with, um, we are quite familiar with um, you know, people having. A divergent opinion and view about what we say, uh, that, doesn't, um, that doesn't get us angry because we know we are on the path of truth. The data I'm, I'm referring to, they are here, they are, they are, they are statistics that, uh, you know, are facts. Uh, he needs to bring out his own statistics before he can disprove the one that we have put on the table. And again, when he is talking about salaries, I've just told you, what we are paying, level 13 takes 93,000 in Kogi states. We pay 100% to state civil servants that under our employ. And then in the state I'm talking about, they take 55,000. These are statistical facts, which I'm going to send to you and then challenge you to investigate. 
and you know unravel the veracity of mm, the claims mm. that I'm making here. Mm, and mm. you know, not to leave that when we are talking about infrastructure, you see, um, you have different kinds of you have different kinds of people. I can almost tell you where the person who called in is coming from. I can almost tell you because there are some people there who have been brainwashed to believe in ethnocentrism. And those set of people will condemn whatever you do. Now he's talking to you about the road from Ganaja, which of course is the federal road, which of course the state government is intervening. And he's not talking to you about the township's roads in Lokoja. Okay. Just last week, we were able to fix all the roads in phase two, within the phase two estate. And most of the roads in the township of Lokoja have been fixed. He's not going to talk about all of this. He's going to talk about just that only one that is a federal government road that okay. has not been fixed. Okay, I, so I understand we, that. We are, uh, 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 yeah. One moment, sir. One moment, sir. Whereas there might be more you want to add, uh, but let me just bring on Mr. Joshua, who has called in from Ire Walide. Good morning to you, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I greet your guest. Yes. I, I think uh, for me, when uh, government uh, officials come to give their scorecard, uh, it's good enough. I just want, uh, want us to understand that we are in the age of information technology, and the people should be able to speak up for themselves if they have been served by their government. I think the people are responsible for uh, giving the scorecard, as it were, uh, or rewarding service which has been delivered to them. So I would not fault whatever he's saying, whether it's true or not. But when they go for the election, they should be aware that they will be rewarded according to their work. I want to tie it to what the previous uh, guest has spoken about, about the Southeast. That touches my heart, Uncle Yori. Uh, Nigeria is currently suffering from the problem of ethnicity and religion. And it's unfortunate. And it's affecting that re region very much. If you're still listening, the Southeast needs to address a particular issue in that Southeast that is causing uh, lack of development in the Southeast. I've asked myself, why would the Southeast not develop if they have governors that are from the Southeast? So the point is, the people should, we the people should start talking from the point of taking responsibility for the services that politicians are delivering to us mm -hmm. so that there will be balance of opinion, balance of information. Indeed. And we can see exactly what is going on. And then that can foster the unity of the nation. If politicians are delivering service and we are receiving it, things will be better. Indeed. Thank you uh, thank very you. much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joshua, for calling in. And um, I can see how you linked that um, because... Um, um, you know, Honorable Fanwo, he, you also spoke about, well, ethnocentric kind of um, uh, politics being also in the air. That was the charge that you laid when that uh, gentleman called in from Abuja saying that um, he wanted to contest your figures. But as, this is a scorecard. And um, you spoke about the fact that there will be continuity, some of the policies, and these are policies that, um, you know, it, it, you, you're ready to defend. Uh, and you're standing by uh, your statements that you have made. Now, talking about continuity, the APC candidate is Usman Ododo. And uh, you, you, you were saying that this morning, uh, you're, you're heading after this towards uh, the inauguration of, of an event concerned with a, a transition or, or a campaign. Could you speak to me a bit about that, please? Yes, uh, today we are going to be, you know, before I go into that, Okay. Um, let me, let me address at least uh, one part of uh, the, the, uh, get the, the caller, one part of uh, the issues he raised had to do with the state and had to do with um, presenting scorecards. It okay. is our responsibility to present our scorecards. If we don't present it, nobody is going to present it for us. Also, it is also the responsibility of the citizens to put us on our toes. We are a very responsive and responsible government that has always happened to the voice of the people. And that is why uh, most of our projects 
are anchored on the needs of the people. We go around before we draw up our budget. So it is always people-centered budget that we build in the state. And that's why most of our projects are highly welcomed by the people. Mm. So when they talk about reward in the election, yes, we went to the 2019 election. We were rewarded by very grateful Kogi people. Mm. We went into the um, governorship election in the same 2019. We were remembered, with a, we, were, we were rewarded with a landslide victory by the grateful people of Kogi State. And also in February and March, they rewarded us again with massive victory. And again in November 2023, November 11 to be specific, we are very confident that our candidate will merge as the next governor of Kogi State. So now, before you even leave, before you leave, in, sorry, sir, before you leave, before you leave that theme, uh, you haven't even spoken about healthcare yet. Yes, you've spoken extensively about education. Uh, well, extensively, but you know what I mean. Uh, but you know, healthcare, for instance. That the president I'm sure has devoted a lot of attention to, especially the issue of primary health care. And that's the closest to the, to the people. So we've developed uh, our primary health care system in such a way that an average co guide will benefit uh, immensely from that. We have also factored into consideration the fact that uh, there are people who are poor who might not be able to afford that. And that led to what we call Belo Care and the health insurance scheme. We're one of the first few states to implement our health insurance scheme so that we can give opportunities to the poor to be able to access Medicare uh, almost free of charge. And that is working uh, very well for us as people who don't even have money in their pockets can go to health centers and access uh, Medicare. Not only that, we have also developed the secondary uh, healthcare system in the state as well as the tertiary healthcare system in the state. You have a lot of uh, GYB model um, health facilities across the state. And uh, you are aware of uh, the reference hospital in Okene, the, the, the specialist hospital in Isonlu, the one in Kaba, the one in uh, Gegu, and all of that. Some of these hospitals are brand new hospitals, especially the ones in Okene, uh, Gegu, Ejonyi, uh, Isonlu, and all of that. And the reference hospital in Okene is one of the best in the country today because we have a lot of equipment that are debuting for the first time in Africa in that hospital. And we have a lot of people coming from uh, far and near to come and access Medicare from the place. Uh, a lot of them even uh, fly into Abuja and come to Kobe State to be able to access uh, this Medicare. The last time I was there, it was a behave of activities as so many people were there to be able to access Medicare. In that same hospital, we are producing an oxygen. We don't buy oxygen. And we're also supplying to about seven neighboring states. So that is, that is quite a lot. Uh, so the, the governor has done so much in improving uh, healthcare in the state. And that's why the people are very grateful. Indeed. When you see some of critics, some of them are not even aware. That's why the fact that every day we come out to put this in the public uh, sphere, especially some of these hospitals. Let me give you an example. We have a hyperbaric chimbal uh, machine at a um, uh, reference hospital. The only place you can have this is in Europe. And you have Nigerians going there to queue up to be able to use this machine. And now you have it in Kogi State. So we do a lot of publicity to enlighten the people that we have turned Kogi Healthcare to what you can, what you can access in Europe. And you know, many people will be aware, but because of their bias and because of the fact that they have not been completely healed of their ethnocentric politics, then they will still come out to say, oh, he has not done anything. Even if he has done it in their backyard, he has done the road uh, that passes through their backyard, they will still say, oh, this road, he has not done anything. So we understand this perfectly. You, you know, but the people at the grassroots who use these facilities mm. always come out to support us. You know, com Commissioner, this reminds <laughs> me, uh, sorry, sorry yeah. Commissioner, this reminds me that um, uh, during the whole COVID brouhaha, I don't know what else to call it, um, you, you sort of, uh, you, <laughs> your state became famous by, you know, actually asserting that whatever is going on, we know ourselves and we know that there is not this whole brouhaha there. I don't know how you feel nowadays. Do you feel that you were, you've been vindicated? So vindicated. We've been so vindicated. It was after the COVID that we had the reference hospital in Okene that we have the one in Egoi, that we have the one in Gegu, that we have the one in Isolu, that we remodeled the specialist hospital in Lokoja, that we remodeled the zona hospital in Ida, and most of these set facilities are serving our people. So instead of concentrating on hyping and popularizing COVID, 
We were busy strengthening our healthcare system. And that was the argument of the governor. The governor did not say that there was nothing like that, be it in form of a flu or anything. But what he was saying is that it has been over-dramatized. And instead of concentrating on that, he would rather concentrate on strengthening the healthcare system in his state. And that's what he did. And that's what he did. And why so, some economies were locked down and they were suffering from recession? Immediately after COVID, billions of naira were released to construct the first uh, flyover in Lokoja. So you could see that, you know, it was a, a blessing to us. We refused to be locked down. We refused to jump into the straight jacket um, manipulation of, of the, the head economists who wanted to turn it to a commercial venture. We refused to accept that. And today, Kogi is better off for that. Okay, uh, Honorable. Well, we have just a few moments left. There must be a lot of um, you, you, you having, you know, the whole searchlight on, on Kogi over there. Uh, there must be cracks that, we, that I didn't touch on. What are those things in the couple of minutes that we have left that you feel uh, should be known in terms of, um, one, moving towards the uh, November election and um, the matters arising in Kogi politics? Yeah, let, let me say this. You know, we, we have all sort of um, opposition parties right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, some of them, you know, coming with very spurious lies and, um, you know, things that are untrue, uh, you know. And I just want to urge the media to put them on the spot. You know, you know when people come to, you know, when, when uh, the candidate of the ADC, Eda Leke Abejide, came out to say level 15 officer is taking... Uh, is it 6,000 or 7,000? And saying it, you know, when you tell lies with so much arrogance, then, you know, one will worry. And that's why, you see, the people of the state are a lot worried that oh, they, they, they can't entrust the state in the hands of uh, people who do not even understand the state. They don't even understand the figures. They don't understand the state. They don't understand governance. All they were doing was to... Uh, look for a few uh, students in some secondary schools and pay uh, for their white fees and then brandish that as the reason why they should be in the House of Representatives. And they don't even know their parties too. Today, they will be fraternizing with um, some APC bigwigs. Uh, tomorrow, they will come home and start scandalizing the same APC. So you can see a whole lot of confusion around the so-called opposition. We expected a very strong opposition. We were not expecting opposition that does not even know how to process data, does not even know how, to, uh, how the state is being managed. We were not expecting such opposition. We are not expecting an opposition that is, is secondary school, an opponent that the secondary school certificate is even in contention. They are, they are saying he did not finish from the school. The school said he did not finish. The school will come out tomorrow and say uh, they are checking their record. If we are battling with whether the person has finished secondary school or not in this 21st century, uh, you know, Kogi State. You know, these okay. people. I have just. A, guys, I, ha guys, I beg your pardon. Pay, I have just a couple of minutes. For that to understand uh, what they need, and okay. when you look at the PPP that is supposed to offer that credible opposition, because these other people they are not even in the race. Okay. ADC is not in the race. Now SDP I have. Is not in the race. Commissioner, but the PDP I have. That is supposed to be in the race. All their big wigs have left the desolate house. When you see a house burning, you will leave the house. All right. You know. Then. Commissioner, I was, going, I was trying to slip in when you've used up the time. Thank you very much. I was going to ask about security and the judgment that Abejide cannot be arrested, maybe just spend a few moments there, but you've used up all the time. Uh, is, there anything okay. you, is there anything you can say in 15, 20 seconds? Okay, about security, uh, this is a very secure state, and uh, even the election is, going to, is not going to encourage a compromise on the security architecture of the state. We will go after our criminals. We will not spare anybody, whether you are in APC or PDP or ADC or anywhere. We will go after the person. We've got, got to leave it there. I beg your pardon, Honorable Commissioner. Very, We've got to leave it there. Neglect, uh, because, uh, you know, nobody was uh, chasing him. I think he's the one chasing himself because he knows he has lost. He's not in contention. He's not, as far as the election is concerned, he's not a non-entity. He's, non he's not, we've he's got not to leave an it there. entity we're concerned about. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kingsley Fanwo. Honorable Commissioner for uh, Information and Communication uh, in Kogi State. Thank you very much for making yourself, you know, available for the program. So that's our Thank program you. today. We've got to leave it here. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare.
Bye bye for now. DSTV. All the goals, all the clashes, all the moments. All of Rashford, Salah, and Saka. All in the language of your choice. All in HD. Available on all these bouquets to choose from. To watch on all these devices. Stay connected for all the action. Get DSTV with an HD decoder. Plus dish, plus one month confirmed for 18,500 Naira. It's the Premier League. All on DSTV. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Are you worried about the safety and security of your home at night? Do you wish to know when intruders come close to your home? Or do you want to protect what matters to your family from anywhere at any time? What if there was a convenient, affordable way to keep surveillance in your home without having to worry about wires, installations, or heavy light bills? Introducing the incredible Sidebulb HD Cam. The robotic 360-degree two-way talk camera with action tracking technology. Sidebulb is the ultimate solution for discreet and powerful surveillance. It's so easy to install and the app lets you rotate and view the video from your Sidebulb in real time from any smartphone. You can drop in from anywhere and check in with our two-way talk technology. Talk and listen at the same time. Hello, mommy. Hey, sweetie. I'll be home soon, okay? Sidebulb's advanced tracking technology locks onto motion and tracks in real time. Set the siren alarm to go up when motion is detected and keep intruders away. Check in on your home while you're away. Make sure the kids got home safely. Interact with visitors at your doorway or surprise a trespasser. Surveillance in a light bulb. I was amazed at the 360 degree rotation. It gives me a full view of my house and I can check in on my kids. The footage is clear and the night vision is so impressive. The best part, I can add multiple sidebulbs for a complete home surveillance. I really like my sidebulb. It's so easy to use. I just downloaded the app, I put it on my phone and I add it up and run in about three minutes. Traditional surveillance systems are bulky, expensive and difficult to install. But with Sidebulb HD Cam's innovative design, installation is as fast as changing a light bulb and it's made for indoor and outdoor surveillance. The Sidebulb HD Cam is now available in Nigeria exclusively from ShopX TV. You could be paying up to 200,000 Naira for an indoor and outdoor security system that doesn't fully secure your home. But call the number on your screen now and get the Sidebulb HD Cam for just 45,000 Naira and get peace of mind. And that's not all. If you call now, we'll give you an extra Sidebulb at no extra cost. That means you buy one and get one free for 45,000 Naira. But wait! There's more. If you order now, you get the Sidebulb HD Cam delivered to you for free wherever you are in Nigeria. 